most of people know you like a composer of a video game called Vector Man. Most because you didn't upload any of your other work online. But I know that you're a lot more than just the guy who made this soundtrack. Uh, and uh, I remember that 10 years ago you were about to release your first, your only solo album and you disappeared totally. I knew you were going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? What happened? Um, I changed the concept of what I wanted to do musically. I, uh, I thought I knew the direction I wanted to go and I'm very good at second guessing myself. I make my life very complicated by um, sometimes I overanalyze things, you know, I overanalyze who my market is going to be. Um, it's not because I don't have a sound, it's because I have many different sounds. And a lot of people feel that you should combine a lot of this stuff into one sound. And sometimes that's difficult to do if you are trying to find an audience. And for me that's important. It's important to know who, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of artists don't think of that. It doesn't matter to them. To me it matters because I want a lot of people to hear what I'm doing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that and life happened. You know, I moved, I moved cities when I was, uh, when things were really busy, about eight or nine years ago, maybe more, um, I was, uh, I didn't have the time to do an album. Then when things were less busy with the game work, it was a good time to do the album, but I wanted to move back to San Francisco. So I moved from Yosemite National Park. I was living in the forest, you know, in a community, nice area, you know, lots of peace and quiet. And I thought maybe I want to go back to the city to work on my album. And then I moved to the city and then I started doing things. Just time passes by very quickly, you know. The economy changed. Mm -hmm. I was doing less game work, um, doing some other things with that are not musically related, you know, some businesses. I'm involved with photography a lot. And um, you'll hopefully be hearing about some of that stuff maybe by next year. Um, maybe it'll be interesting to you, maybe it won't, but uh, you know, so not only do I not just do video games music and do different music, but I also do things besides music, mm -hmm. you know. So to answer your question simply, um, I can tell you that more, I think it's because um, I have two sides. I have a ambient music side that I want to explore and I have a dance music side that I want to continue. So. Um, I'm trying to figure out, you know, and I have been working on some music, I just haven't released it. I have about a half an album's worth of material, and a lot of it sound, they don't sound the same. It would sound strange on the same album, at least through my eyes, you know. BT doesn't care, so maybe I shouldn't care, you know, but um, I, I can't tell you, you know, because I'm always saying soon, mm -hmm. I don't want to say soon, but, um, I've been very busy the past year, I can tell you that. So some of it, um, hopefully some music will come out. Now whether that will be John Holland music for my album, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I told you earlier today, I was doing some interesting remixes, so we'll see if that stuff starts to come out. I won't tell you who. You know, but you guys don't know. <laughs> so if they decide to accept it, you know, you'll be hearing a little bit about it. But John Holland TV on YouTube, you can hopefully keep up with some of this stuff. But um, to answer your question, I don't have a good answer for you. I don't know. Because I'm a perfectionist, I think that's not, it's sometimes that's not a good thing. You analyze too much and I'm very good at that. I see. But how you became a, a musician? I've been a musician all of my, I don't want to say all of my adult, almost all of my life. I started uh, when I was, I started to take guitar lessons when I was about nine years old. Um, I was, um, very influenced by, you know, some of the rock bands. I, w I don't want to date myself, so I... <laughs> but um, I was interested in guitar 
and I began the road with the guitar, which is my main instrument still. Mm -hmm. Um, but as soon as I started to hear electronic synthesizers, I knew that was for me. And, I, and I've been involved with that world all of my life. I mean, all of my coherent life that I can remember, you know. But I am a guitar player, so I'm trying to combine this kind of thing. So I, I started with guitar lessons. From guitar lessons, I, I just, I wasn't into the structure of the lessons with a teacher. I wasn't interested in learning the things that they were teaching me. I mean, I was to a certain point, but then the radio took over my ear and I have been playing by ear ever since then. I, I haven't read music. I did some music theory studies when I was in my teens, but I haven't done it since then. It slows me down because I'm not good at that, you know? Too much structure. Mm -hmm. The ordinary musical education uh, doesn't uh, help you to explore it, to open yourself. I'm sure it would if I had the, if I didn't have like ADD. I have a tremendous, strange attention span. Um, it's hard for me because my mind jumps around on a lot of things. And there is a threshold that if I, if my interest in something rises above that threshold, mm -hmm. then I naturally will pursue that until I cannot stay up anymore and I have to sleep. I, like I told you about this remix that mm -hmm. I did, I've spent the past four nights working 14 hours a day on a remix. If I didn't have to sleep or eat, I would have continued the entire time to get this done because I was excited by the project. I was excited listening to the music and the song was evolving. It started here and when it was done, it ended here. And I thought, I don't know how that <laughs> happened, but I kind of like that, you know? So, yeah, it's complicated. Um, I'm sure, to answer your question, yes, I'm sure it would have helped me, but I don't have the chemistry. I don't have the patience mm -hmm. for, you know, but I have, I've continued to learn through, I've, I've continued to learn many of those things that we're speaking of that are taught to you formally. I've continued to learn many of those things on my own, but not again through the, the common structure of music. Here's the sheet music, you read this and you do this. Um, but they, many of them end in the same place. Mm -hmm. I, ju I just get there a different way because of my weird personality. <laughs>
how can I make my own records? And this whole computers and music industry was just in its infancy. That was not common 15, 16 years ago at all. Um, so um, as that was starting to grow, I started to buy some equipment and I ended up at a company um, I was knocking on a lot of doors in San Diego to look for a video game developer or a multimedia developer. And I ended up with a company called Blue Sky Software. So Blue Sky happened to be working on a Sega project. It was a video game for the Sega Genesis. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Blue Sky was working on the Sega project. And I had brought some demos to them, some of the stuff I recorded for Warner Brothers, you know. They had a small music department. Basically, one guy was doing all the, the games. They were working usually on three or four games at one time. Most of them were Sega Genesis games. And he really liked my music. He didn't really know anything about electronic music. And he, his name was Sam Powell, great guy. And he asked me if um, I was interested in maybe uh, hearing about their video game project. And I said, sure. So we said, we have this game that we're developing and we're not sure the name of it yet. Um, you know, we thought about the name Vector Man and I think that's what it, you know, how they ended up with. That seemed the most likely great name, it had a nice ring to it. They told me I had to write all the music with this Sega Genesis platform and um, I didn't know what I was getting into, but I could tell that this was going to be challenging, but fun, you know? So that's it. They hired me to, they, they gave me a contract to, to do the music for this Sega Genesis game. And I think it grew into something more, everybody wanted it to be perfect and it was great. Everybody was working at 110% to make this game really exciting because I think that uh, more advanced game platforms were right around the corner. And they knew that if they were going to do a game for the Genesis, it had to be the best Genesis game. And, and a lot of people really, really liked it and it turned out well. And um, that's it. That's basically how I started. Um, I didn't know a lot about doing sound for games, but you know, I, I did, you know, to me it just needed to be good sound. So it didn't matter where the sound went. I let the audio coders and the programmers deal with what I, after I've done the sounds, here, you know, well, with, with the Genesis, it was different, obviously, because you had to use the game card, the sound chip, to do the sounds, you know. Um, but yeah, it was challenging, and um, as far as you know, making the music. If you want to hear about that, I don't know if you're interested. Yes, in this. yes, because okay. It, it sounds just amazing when you look. It's Sega Genesis, but it's like a CD music. Yeah, it. Thank you very much for saying that. Um, my concept behind the whole, basically the Sega Genesis, you, you probably know more about it now than I can remember. Because I, I, I remember being limited to five or six voices mm -hmm. for the entire soundtrack, okay? A lot of that included sound effects and they usually take priority. Whenever you have a lot of sound effects going on, the music tends to mm -hmm. take a second seat, you know? So um, what I did is I'd heard a lot of Genesis music from people and I realized that's not what I wanted to do. Not because it wasn't good, I just wanted to do something different. I was involved with dance music, I was involved in the whole electronic music scene um, at the time, you know. 
I thought that the best thing for being limited to six notes of polyphony, meaning six notes at one time, I think it was five or six notes, I forgot, but maximum at one time. So anybody who plays a musical instrument knows that that's like one chord or, you know, one guitar strum or whatever. Um, I didn't want to do Wow. To me, I, I would fall asleep listening to that. So I thought, wow, okay, you have five or six notes. Dance music is about syncopation. Kick drum, bass line, kick drum, bass line, hi-hat, kick drum, bass. Nothing really seems to happen on the same beat. Very rare, you know, and again, depends what, what you're talking about. But in the case of the Genesis, we could make Kraftwerk, Depeche Mode kind of soundtracks with using some clever syncopation. Delaying the MIDI channel by a fraction so that they don't hit at the same time. So now you have eighth note delays, sixteenth note delays. With, you know what I'm saying? Meaning that you get like an echo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's no echo, but you're hearing two notes, just the second note is softer than the first. So if you're, you know, you end up with... So it's, none of the notes are hitting at the same time, you know? Yes. That is the concept of the entire Vectorman soundtrack. It's about syncopation. And which is good because, you know, when you use delays and echo with dance music and you use them creatively, you get some really great rhythms. And Vectorman is all about the rhythm for me. And it worked. That's it. That's you know, my, my short answer, you know, 10 hours short answer. It worked out, so it was kind of fun. Yes, and a little bit about the um, <coughs> remix on the CD. Yeah, so for a lot of people who don't know where the Sega Vector Man CD came from and, and who d I did it, it's, it's all the same, the same guy. Um, I was asked, Sega, Sega Proper, who is the company that was publishing the game, um, called me, not the Blue Sky people. We had completed our project, we delivered it to Sega, Sega packaged it, released the game, and I got a call from Sega corporate office in America saying, hey, we really like the Sega Genesis soundtrack. Are you interested in making a CD in your studio of like proper music of these songs, these themes? And I said, well, the songs are only one and a half minutes, two minutes. Well, yeah, can you make them into four minute songs? I guess I can. They said, good, you have 20 days. I said, oh my God. They said, if you don't do it, we can find someone to hear to do it. I said, no, 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 no. I, I, I want to control the sound of this CD, so I, I will do it, sure. No, it was fun. It wasn't much of a conversation. I was ready to do this. It sounded fun. But I thought, man, this is going to be a lot of work for 20 days. So I think I picked 10 songs, you know, or 10 pieces of music from the game, 10 themes. And um, I worked like a mule for, for three weeks to turn those themes into three minute, four minute songs. And um, that's it. It was done for Sega of America as a promotional disc. And like I told you earlier today, I never thought that anybody would hear that this, you know, that, that, that this CD would be circulating, but nobody knew about YouTube back then and all these ways of digging up things and say, hey, look what I found, you know? So yeah, it was fun. It was fun to do that. And that CD ended up getting a lot of publicity for the game, I think, for music people. I don't know. Yes, it was a big part in the life of, mo of most uh, teenage gamers around the world. I've, I get a lot of emails and I've addressed this before. I get a lot, I mean, you know, not thousands, but I've gotten quite a few emails over the past 10 or 15 years from people who are telling me mm -hmm. that the soundtrack to this game, because they were so young, they didn't know about techno and electronic music and dance music. Mm -hmm. this, they said that this was their first exposure to that. And from there, they went to find out about people who are making proper DJ culture music and everything. And that's that's a great compliment. I love to hear that. Yes. Uh, years ago, back then, we used to record our favorite video game music from NES or from Sega, just try to tape and listen to it uh, in schools or on outside. I've heard about you guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was in our um, greatest hits albums. Right. On cassettes. Yeah, Genesis amazing. Remix. Yes, Amazing Time.
Okay, and about your other hobbies uh, as a videographer and uh, photographer. Um, I've been involved with photography not much long, not much less than I've been involved with with uh, music. I had picked up photography when I was about 13 years old. Um, what really captured my imagination about photography, because I'm a nature, I'm a tree hugger, I love nature, I love to be by myself out in very remote areas. I've spent a lot of the past 20 years traveling all over every corner of America and um, I've seen some really great things and um, unfortunately because I'm a bit obsessive uh, when it comes to images, I feel the same way about images. It's like <laughs> 10 years to make my first image that I show people. I've got them. Uh, I'm not saying I have a huge archive of them, but I've got some photographs that, that turned out nice, but I'm looking for a way to present them. And um, I'm hoping in the next couple of years to open my first gallery. I don't know, maybe none of this is going to happen. Um, it all depends on the economics of it, you know, to run a, mm -hmm. a, a retail gallery. But I hope at the very least to start uh, a gallery online of, of, of landscape photography and mm -hmm. you know when I lived um, I don't know how much you know about the Yosemite National Park area but it is a very very important national park it's one of the first one of the first national parks in history it is east of San Francisco um, about uh, three hours and it's a beautiful place um, and I, I lived in the area for about four years uh, about ten years ago and um, you know, it's if you have any interest in photography, being in that area, the whole relationship to a guy named Ansel Adams, uh, you've probably seen a lot of his images and not known that you've seen them. They're black and white photographs, very, very high resolution photographs that are shot on 8x10 film, uh -huh. back old school. And uh, the, the images are stunning. They're just, you've never seen such sharpness and clarity in images that are huge. And I just said, you know, now I'm not gonna wait until I'm 70 years old <laughs> to be a photographer. So it's difficult to explain to people that you do both of those things, probably because you don't really have an identity in the other discipline that they know of yet. That can change very quickly. Hopefully, if I do something that is interesting to people, hopefully they will have a little bit of an, you know, an idea of where I am. But to me, to be honest with you, all of that stuff is tied together. Um, if you are an artist in one discipline, you probably have an interest in another discipline, like yes. painting or sculpting. You know, uh, actors want to be musicians. Musicians want to be sculptors. You know. Um, but this is something I've done almost as long as I've done music and I've kept up with the technology and I'm, I'm very, very obsessed. And digital photography, which is making photography, and also photography is a very expensive hobby for people. If I had a thousand dollars when I was a kid, they went to music equipment. I couldn't, you know, I didn't go out and buy more, you know, I had what I needed, you know, with photography. But usually, if it was a choice between music equipment, a synthesizer, and a camera lens, a lot of the times it went to the music thing because that's what I was most actively involved with. I'm just trying now to finally converge the two. And um, yeah, that's, that's the story I have for you. <laughs> so uh, with filmmaking, my biggest interest in filmmaking is, is obviously more the images. I like to tell you know, um, I'm just getting, you know, as far as hands-on with this stuff, I've kept up with it. Honestly, if I told you for almost 20 years, you would probably think I was crazy because I haven't started making these things yet. Um, I've been following the technology technically. I understand the concept of filmmaking pretty well. Um, but I'm about now to go and do my first surgery with my first live patient. And, uh, you know, before it was reading about how to do heart surgery and knowing all the steps in it now I'm going to be starting to do something like this and Final Cut Pro uh, Premiere all these things are making it easier you know 7d 5d uh, can Canon cameras are making the images and the reason really one of the reasons you haven't seen this stuff from me is that I didn't think the images were good enough for my budget and my budget was under a hundred thousand dollars and now you could do all of this for under five thousand dollars sometimes even under a couple thousand dollars. That didn't exist just five years ago. And trust me, I went to the conference and the conventions, the trade shows, honestly, since 1994, 1995. I, 
I can honestly tell you that most likely in the next year, um, I've certainly got some music. Now, whether I'm going to release it the way that it is now, but I can tell you more than ever I want to. You know, um, I don't want to be releasing music when I'm 70 that is, you know, club related. So, um, you know, there's, you have to make decisions. And I can tell you one thing, what's happened with the electronic music uh, in America, something very funny has happened the past two to four years, is that 10 years ago, we, released, we, we reached a cycle of electronic music if you were in the underground that was fanatical. Mm -hmm. People were getting $50,000 a night to DJ, okay? Oh. Then the economy came and all that went to the toilet, okay? It's happening again and they're making more than 50,000 a night. <laughs> yeah, if you're talking about Dead Mouse shows and Tiesto shows. So the thing is, is that I'm really excited about it, what's going on in electronic music more than I ever have been. And you know, I don't just do electronic music uh, on my songs. I like to incorporate acoustic elements. I'm a guitar player as my main instrument and I want you know, to, to do some things that, are, that can be appreciated by the same people. You know, that's not going to be some rock guitar thing. It's going to have elements of that music that they like. That's what I'm working on now. So the biggest dilemma I have, and I will wrap this up for you, is I don't know whether to put them on the same album under the same name. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest dilemma, and that might be one of the biggest holdups right now. Um, maybe people don't care. Maybe they should just, you know, put it all in the same place. So hopefully, uh, I know one thing is that there'll be some, some music coming out most likely in the next 60 to 90 days. Okay. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> don't, don't hold me to anything. <laughs> don't hold me to that, okay? But I hope that uh, there will be. It was very nice to meet you. To, fi oh, to find you. It was you. nice to meet you too. To, right? to find you first and to meet you. Yeah, it was uh, quite a challenge for us. Yes. But it's good to meet you too. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for all your interest. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you to everybody who listens to anything that I've done. Thank you for caring. Thanks for your interest. And uh, I look forward to, to doing some things that are uh, even more interesting for you. So thanks, guys. <laughs>